नमस्कार वेलकम टू वाइड एंगल अशोक व्यास टुडे शो इज वेरी वेरी स्पेशल फॉर मी स्पेशली व्हेन द ईयर इज नियर द मोमेंट व्हेन वी विल से बाय बाय टू इट वी स्टार्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट व्हाट आर यू गोइंग टू डू आई हैड आउट टू मेक द मोस्ट ऑफ दी अपकमिंग ईयर एंड इन दैट कंटेक्स देर इज अ चाइल्ड इन ऑल ऑफ अस हु इज इनक्विजिटिव बट देर इज ऑल्सो अ चाइल्ड इन अस हु इज वेरी लेजी सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू मेक द मोस्ट ऑफ any uh, period of time especially a year then the question of how to plan comes in mind and in order to address that i have the pleasure of welcoming my friend uh, speaker motivational speaker and author sunil robert sunil ji namaste swagat hai aapka uh, let us begin with the congratulations to you for having participated in another marathon and talk to me about preparing for marathon thank you ashok ji always a pleasure to uh, share my insights with uh, you and your audiences uh, a marathon is actually a a full year sort of a commitment that someone takes on so for example if i did the chicago marathon in october which meant i had to kind of uh, enlist at the beginning of the year and then my process started so uh, an average runner and more so an elderly sort of a runner like me uh, spends about 4 to 5 months of die hard preparation in leading up to the marathon and then after a marathon then there's some tailing down kind of a thing so about 5 to 6 months is invested in a of course there are some crazy runners who for them fitness is a way of life and they run 2 3 marathons a year and and so their approach is different but for a regular um, common person like me it's a an annual commitment i at least do one or two a year and those are really the high points of my year so really when we are talking about the art of planning and of course marathon being one part of it uh, i keep hearing that if you are clear about your why then you will sustain your momentum and motivation so let me ask you what is the answer to why and many times if that why is shaky then you lose uh, the yeah. passion absolutely in fact um, till about 20 years ago a little over 20 years ago uh, i did not have this notion of setting goals or planning for your year ahead and we come from india where is that deterministic mindset is jo hoega hoega ke sara sara whatever will be will be um, no matter how you plan or you whatever is god's will ishwar ki ichha whatever these pervade our world view and i was no different mera mindset bhi wahi it was like you know jo ho jayega ho jayega kind of chalta hai attitude kind of a thing but i attended uh, some workshops and teachings that allowed me to show that the world really belongs to two kinds of people uh, those who set clear goals and run their lives and then there are those who are called i call the drifters now drifters ke sath kya hota hai because they are sort of it's not that they are not achievers among the drifters they achieve too but their achievements are more by impulse and intuition rather than a systematic set of goals and plans intuitive achievers ko bhi jagah hai i mean if you look at uh, you know great cricketers or uh, you know uh, superstars in our uh, different worlds spheres around us it's not as if they set out goals and said within 3 years i'll become a superstar i mean there's a whole lot of beyond their control elements too but luck and other elements apart the world belongs to those who set clear goals and to your question of what is the why personally for me the why came because i wanted to make my life a very influential or sort of an inspirational in its completion i look back and i said i want to redefine my life from an end stand point the day i leave i mean in our culture it's awkward to talk about you know our finality but the day i leave what is the impact i want to leave on this world and so for everything for me goals step out from there uh aapko wo maine share kiya earlier in our uh, earlier conversation I, i was involved in a near death accident in 2020 so what does it mean therefore such defining moments teach you that your life is finite and your time table is finite so you work backwards and say what are some of the must do things that i need to achieve and so planning becomes very essential now that we are talking about the 
essential uh, uh, light associated with planning. And uh, as Sunil ji uh, shared his uh, uh, and game, I say, <laughs> but uh, the way he, if I say, would like to be remembered or the kind of impact that he wants to create. So some people say that no, I, I don't want to leave any impact. So then he, he still have something uh, that would kind of be his guiding uh, force, and so each one needs to figure yeah. out what is uh, the uh, the most attractive uh, goalpost that he or she wants sure, to reach. Sure. And uh, can you sort of share your thoughts on when people say I lack clarity, then short term goal should be to get clarity and if we talk a little bit with you about the short term goal of being clear what you want, is there any tip that you may yeah. want to share? Oh, absolutely. In, in fact, some people say, show me your checkbook and I'll tell you what kind of person you are. Uh, I'll go to one step further and say, show me your calendar and I'll tell you what, what type of person you are. And even if you don't want to show me your calendar, just share with me what you did in the last three, four days. If you and, and do a sort of an audit in terms of where you spend your time, do you spend it with people? Do you spend it by consuming mindless content on TV? Do you spend time traveling? Do you spend time doing things and achievement? So what gives you pleasure is a function of how you invest your time. Nobody actually spends time. They are choosing to allocate time. They are choosing to allocate to a certain set of priorities. So if you tell me what your priorities are, whether you have clarity or not, we'll be able to actually get towards what gives you joy. So I, I work with a lot of young people and, and they say, you know, my parents want me to do it, but I want to do this. I don't know. I'm confused. So when you talk to young people and, and you start asking questions around clarity, and say, what gives you, what, what would you do if nobody paid you? What would you do if nobody told you to do this? Right? In a in an unlimited set of opportunities, what is the first, second, third things you would pick and do. So those are kind, kind of, I mean, young people would just like to be on all day on Instagram or all day on Netflix or whatever channels they consume content, right? Are they just mindlessly absorbing it or is it linked to a deeper passion they have? They enjoy, let's say I enjoy watching movies. Watching movies is only one part of it. Actually underlying that is a love of stories, a love of, you know, creativity and, uh, and a whole lot of other associated things. So if, if given an option, perhaps I would, you know, be part of a project that would involve movie making or writing about movies or, you know, you know, hosting events around movies. So if anybody is struggling for clarity on what they need to do in, in the times that they have, the absolute priority is what is it that you enjoy doing most? In fact, there's a wonderful term called Ikigai, Japanese term. I've shared that earlier too. It's essentially what gives you pleasure what can you make money out of and what the world needs and what are you so f in love with? When all those four come together, they say, in fact, because of that four elements, they say in Japan, people leave, live for more than hundreds of years. So that study Ikigai actually linked to long life and fulfilling life. So if you really want to make your life count, you have to be passionate about what you're doing and enjoy what you're doing and hopefully making money out of it. So I... Um I don't know whether it's very serious uh, <laughs> way of sharing, but I enjoy talking to you right now, and I enjoy um, having these kind of conversations. And uh, I do make some money out of it, <laughs> so I'm going to live long. I think so. When I live long, I want you also to be with me, and uh, not just be with me, but enjoy being there. And in order to enjoy, we are taking uh, help from uh, Sunil ji in terms of uh, the art of planning. So now let us come back to a new year and how you yourself uh, sort of a design your calendar for the new year. Sure. So like I shared 20 years ago, I had this sort of epiphany and uh, shift that I needed to make from being a drifter to actually a directed person. So I, actually, if, if you challenge me, I'll be able to open some of my old Excel sheets and show you year after year how I set goals and most achieve. of them, most of them, I was by God's grace able to achieve. Not all of them in the same year, though. Some sometimes, for reasons beyond me, they get spilt over. 
but at least I know that that's a dream in flight or that's a goal in flight for me that I missed this year, but I... Okay, so I interrupt you and please don't leave your thread in mind. But many times it happens and that has happened with me that we are not pragmatic in deciding our goals. And I end up having multiple goals for the same period of time and then end up not being able to finish any one. Actually, that's a precondition to having goals. You should not have just one or two. You should have multiple sets of goals in multiple spheres of our lives. For example, if I am running a marathon, it comes under my physical fitness or my physical uh, area of goals. So, broadly speaking, the guidance I give to people is you should have goals for at least four areas in your life. The physical, the relational, as in people, and the, the, the spiritual or the... Uh, where it involves your soul and your growth and so on, and then the intellectual. Intellectual is the mental, uh, the, the books that I would read, the courses that I would take, the certifications that I need to get and so on. So to be competitive in the business world, I need to be on top in my mental game. So in those four or five areas, if I have multiple goals, then at any point of time, I am pursuing those. Not all will be in balance at any point of time, but you exceed. For example, one particular year in 2017, I was setting a goal to run a marathon, but I injured my hamstring and I could not run the marathon, which means I fell short in my physical area. But because I, I could not run the marathon, some time opened up and I was able to work on a book that I was uh, falling short of. So what fell in one physical area, I was able to compensate in the intellectual area. It also allows you to do a lot of reading because obviously one area you fell short. Same is true of finances. Many people do not know how much money they are earning and how much money, they, they know how much money is coming into them, but they don't exactly know where it is going. And at the end of the month or at the end of the year, they look back and say, Are, where did all this go? So your ability to let financial goals also monitor you closely. How fast do you want to grow? If you want to buy a house, how do you plan for it? If you want to invest in something, how do you invest? All our goals are ultimately measured in financial success, relational success, physical outcomes, and so on and so forth. So if you don't have goals, and that's, that's where I talk about the difference between a goal and a dream. If I ask you or your audience, do you know what is the difference between a goal and a dream? You'll probably struggle. And the, the difference is, there are actually two, but the difference between a goal and a dream is a deadline. The deadline should be written down somewhere. Meaning I can't say, yeah, I want to lose weight. That's a dream. But if I say, I'm currently at 180 pounds, but by next year I want to be at 165 or 170 pounds, and by December 31st, I will measure and I will put it down. Then you are talking about a 12 month time frame. So deadlines are very crucial in our planning elements. I think um, I'm kind of sort of backtracking and just for uh, simplicity, based on what I heard from you, one, we can probably look at our life with certain sections, I'll say. Yeah. One, as you mentioned, physical, intellectual, spiritual, financial, like that. So right. social. Then, then it becomes social, so then it or relational, as you said. So then it becomes a little bit easier for those of us, like those who are not very clear what goal, how to make it, etc. So then you have these bifurcated special tracks. True. So you have one goal here, one goal there. True. And then I come to another side where sometimes, let's say, you feel little uh, unsure whether I'll be able to accomplish because every time you don't have complete control on situations as you Absolutely. mentioned about one. Still, would you say that whether uh, you are 100% confident or not, you make a goal or you should only make those goals about which you are internally assured that you will be able to accomplish. No, actually, you should. if you are internally assured that you will achieve it, you should not even mention it. In my view, the definition of a goal is it has to be a stretch goal. It needs to stretch you. If I put a goal saying, eh, I'll run a half marathon, I'll not even put it in my goal because running 13 miles is for me like a midnight walk. I Are mean, you? I can easily... Mm -hmm with a little bit of effort, I can easily run a half marathon any given day. So I will not even put it down. What I will put it down is, as I'm growing older, 
each year becomes tougher, so should I put one marathon or two marathons? These are stretch goals. And then, because they're stretching you, they're worth achieving. If they're not stretching you, you're not learning, you're not growing. And so you are pretty much at the same area that you were, let's say, the previous year. If I'm comfortably reading about 20 books a year, intellectual growth should be, I should move to maybe 30 or 40 books a year and be able to recall what's happening in those books or have a good summary notes and so on. But if I'm doing 20, 30 anyways, I'm not growing any more than what I'm growing at the previous year. So by definition, goals have to be stretched. And the advantage with stretch is, when you shoot for 150 and you only hit 120, you still hit 20% more than what you would have on your own without a, a goal done it. But if you don't know, then you don't. So in the business world, there's a saying that what you measure, you cannot, uh, what, you can, uh, what you cannot measure, you cannot monitor. So how would you know what you're capable of if you don't stretch and if you don't hit it? So um, the goal should have some unit that you measure, like number of books, etc. In this case, it, it may be segue from what we are discussing, but allow me to sort of share. See, even if you are reading 20 books every year, still the books that you are reading in the new year are different than what you have read. Correct. So I think still it is uh, worthy uh, of pursuing. Exactly. So the, the ability to measure it and say, if I'm doing this with zero effort or with marginal effort, how can I grow? See, ultimately, all planning is to be better than what we were the previous year. Have I grown? See, when, when, we are, when our children are growing, when we are young, people measure us. Why is he not growing? Any problem, right? And the same thing with mental maturity. If they are not speaking at an appropriate age-related maturity, you'll start wondering what's happening to his intellectual growth. But once we become adults, nobody measures us on our adulthood. I mean, he's doing something. But only you know, the man in the mirror or the person in the mirror knows whether you have grown since last year. Whether you have actually developed your mind, developed your habits, developed your personality. And as we hit adulthood and our level, we are actually going down the hill, so to speak, in a sense, from a health standpoint, from a fitness standpoint from our energy standpoint. So if you don't have conscious set of planning tools of how you divide your uh, year, how much time, uh, people are spending a lot of time changing the world, philanthropy and social work and stuff. If you don't have goals and say, I'll go and impact so-and-so village in our com country back home or a community right here in New Jersey, USA, or if you don't have those goals, then you'll never achieve them. So having goals is important and uh, following through uh, through uh, planning, measuring your success at every step or certain unit of time that oh, in one week I did this, one month I did this. Let's say if someone realizes and which happens many times when we have new year resolutions that uh, you uh, realize you are not following through, then you say leave it. And maybe next year you don't even plan. So what would be, be your advice some people who feel that uh, this planning thing is not for me because I end up not being able to do it. So you will say, okay, stay put. I, I don't care. I mean, because it's your life. Or you will have some sort of insight sure. for them. Sure. Uh, most people actually talk a, uh, a lot around the New Year resolutions. Everybody say, Are, there are only two kinds of people. People who are very religious about the New Year re resolutions. And then there are these very artificial type of people who say, this year my resolution is not to have a resolution. Yes. Why? Because I failed in the past. So that's no excuse. If you failed in the past, it's because your old habits got the better of you. You can't keep doing the same old thing. In fact, Stephen Covey, one of my favorite writers said, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if your habits have let you down in the past, you can't change goals. You, you have to change your habits. Same thing with me. One of the goals that I struggle with is, uh, I mean, if I come across as a superhero, pardon me, that was not the idea. I struggle too. One of my uh, goals uh, that I struggle with is wasting time on cricket uh, commentary, sports commentary, some of these mindless TV watching. I struggle. 
But what keeps me going are constant reminders from my monthly goals. If I have a big goal this year, let's say running a marathon or writing a book or, 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 or just doing something that is spread out throughout the year, if I don't attack it on a monthly basis, that goal will just engulf me. In the end, I'll just surrender and say, Mujhe nahi I, I, it's not going to work for me. So if the ability for you to break your goal into multiple units and spread it across the month is very important. So one month, let's say, because of parties, because of something, you fell off the wagon. Then you can always pick up when the next month comes and say, I, I'll get back on track and pursue my goals. So to me, fitness goals. I, I tell people, fitness, you can fall off the wagon as many times as you want. You know, diets, for example, when people try to stay on a diet of weight loss, what tends to happen is the first time they fall, they fall badly and out of guilt, they, they say, I fell off and I won't be able to do it. But do a mathematical analysis or a dispassionate analysis. The people who have these dream bodies or dream uh, weights are those people who are, who are not the ones who have not fallen. They fall, but immediately they pick up and get back on track. If, if there's a party season, Diwali season, Dashera season, we end up eating a lot. But once the season passes, you have to get back to the gym, get back to your weight loss plan and, and stay on it. Because out, ultimately, what you do well versus what you do, fall off should be minor in fraction. And then you, you achieve your goal. So you achieve your goal is important. And in order to do that, you need to break it up in, uh, uh, say, uh, every week or uh, every day. So let's talk about it on day-to-day -day basis as far as planning is concerned. Then there are so many apps also where you have to-do lists, etc. And uh, some people, I mean, I say like me, they, they do to-do lists for a few days and then realize that, oh, I'm not following, following through the to-do list. So then they do away with the to-do list also. But uh, sincerely speaking, tell us uh, your uh, way of... Um, working uh, diligently with day time wise for me the biggest uh, benefit is when i publish my goals i publish it to my family and your family support is very important because let's say i want to run a marathon i can't go away to the gym for two two three three hours at a time and have a spouse who's unhappy with me right so my goals have to be seen <clears throat> in the light of my family goals if i want to be a good husband, a spouse, a dad, and also a good sibling to my brother and sister, good friend. These are all the roles that we have, right? You need to have goals around those, which is why I said social goals. So my marathon goal, fitness goal, cannot conflict with my social goal because the show, then social goals will suffer. And the ability for me to run these goals simultaneously, each without the sacrificing, is very important. So, personally, I share it with everybody. Then when I say, Arey, yaar, ye Saturday, Friday night, I can't come to this party because agar, even if I come, I'll come for 10 minutes, just show my face and go. Then they understand because next day morning, you have an early morning run. So, because I shared my goal, ki, main bhaag raho, I'm running the New York Marathon or Chicago Marathon, they kind of... They are understand. grudging in, way, in a way, but they at least understand. So your goals have to be seen in total composite of your family situation, your personal situation. And your goals have to flow on into a timeline every day of the week. I, I, at, at the beginning of the program, I said it's a four or five min month plan for my marathon to actually final date. Which means for a race that is happening in March 2023 in Tokyo, Japan, my training has already started. This week, I have to put in about five hours. And whether I do it today, tomorrow, and then the Sunday or Saturday is completely up to me. But I have to put those five hours. And it leads up to March all the way through. So your daily habits or priorities flow from your goals. And your goals flow from the purpose that you've outwritten in your, in your earlier part of. See, ultimately, we are all measured by our seasons. In the season of being an early dad of two boys, have I done well? Have I inspired my children? Have I inspired my spouse, my friends? Is a function of whether this season went well for me. So that's the way I look at it. So I think I'm speechless in terms of um, 
the amount of possibilities uh, uh, we have as human beings and people like Sonia Robert who realize uh, how to, to, to shift their focus uh, towards the right direction and sustain it and achieve. Uh, so if you read a book uh, by someone who has not practiced it, it will not make that much impact as this conversation uh, with Sunil Robert might uh, have made or will make is uh, the feeling that I get by your presence, Sunil. Thank you very much. Uh, and just last 30 seconds additional always for you. Anything else you want to add? No, the, the year has come to an end and um, the entire possibilities of 2023 is ahead of you. So by all means, take some time off before uh, the holidays are over. Sit down and say, how should 2023 look like for you from a personal physical fitness standpoint, your relational standpoint, your uh, financial standpoint, and your intellectual growth standpoint? If you're not growing in all these areas, one area will suffer at the expense of the other. So write goals down. Remember, dreams with a deadline are called goals. Wonderful. Dreams with deadline are goals. So make your deadlines um, with uh, response to your own goals. And uh, the idea is that you, we, each one of us make the most of that which we are in a position to offer. And we can always increase uh, our position of the ability to offer. And uh, that makes the world a beautiful place uh, when you are fulfilled, happy, satisfied, and uh, excited about what you are doing. And I was really looking forward to this conversation. So I thank Sonili for joining me. And uh, with lots and lots of good wishes, this is Ashok Vyas. Namaste.